Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I know we're all getting tired. It's at the end of, uh, of a long conference. My name's Stuart Gus. I'm a marijuana expert. Um, I'm a consultant. Um, most importantly, I'm an advocate of all things marijuana, medical marijuana especially. I'm the founder of the MMJ Muse Project, and uh, we are doing important research on CBDs, and we're looking into the science of medical marijuana. People use the abbreviation MMJ all too often. We are talking about medical marijuana here. And first out, I'd like to, I'd like to actually say, I'd like to shout out to Keith Straup, the, the founder of Normal. <clears throat> He's, he's my brother from another mother. I've got love for you, nothing but love for you. And I got to tell you, man, I wore this tie for you because you, you inspired me to be professional. I got to tell you, now it's coming off. Yeah. All right? I've been there and I've done that before. So. So let's talk for a second here. Aside from, from Keith, I'd like to thank Sean McAllister for inviting me here to, to address DFW Normal, a rocking group of people, as well as uh, Gina Epps. She is my amazing intern and personal assistant. She's in Chicago. She's about to have Jax, her first baby, and it's going to so rock, and she's my good right arm, I got to tell you. And I'll quickly throw out a shout out to my boys, Austin and Jordan. My mom and dad divided down the middle on this issue. So I call it a draw. And uh, my brothers and everybody else here at the normal uh, conference. Um, Edmund Burke once said that all that's necessary for the triumph of evil is that good men and women do nothing. Okay? We can't afford to do nothing. This man is far smarter than I was, or I am, but he's right. And this is important research that's being done, and, and frankly, I'm honored to have a, a, a part in it. And what we're going to do is, is briefly touch on some of these, and the fact is that the mouse isn't working. So we're going to go back, and we're going to start again. No, actually, we're going in the wrong direction. Here we go. Well, maybe not. There we go. All right, so anyway, again, Stuart Gus, we set up the Facebook page, MMJ Muse. Since then, people have been coming one by one, two by two. We've never invited them. They simply come as patients, as advocates, as researchers, and we put together a team that stretches from the UA UCLA uh, laboratories um, to uh, Corvallis, Oregon, to Chicago, across the country. We've got the greatest minds in the country working on this now, and we're taking a look into it, but I got news for you. This isn't a medical conference. I don't expect to go into detail here. And frankly, in 15 minutes, there's not a hell of a lot that I, I can uh, do about going into this issue in depth. But it's got a lot to do with community. It's got to do with people out there suffering. And it's got to do with giving them some hope. And the title of my talk was CBDs, the anti-THC, the best, the possible best hope for patients who traditional medical care has failed. And you know what? Strike possible, this is the best hope. And I've got patients who come to me daily, and I'll tell you what, it's sad, it's touching. And anybody who ever comes to me for help is gonna get it. And they inspire me. And I think that we have to remember what this is all about. You know what? Who got high today? I got baked today. Okay? Seriously. All right. I got baked today. I'm still up here, and you know what? I can be eloquent. I can discuss this um, uh, in depth, 
and uh, give you the answers that you're seeking. And the fact of the matter is, is um, that uh, I've been smoking pot since 69, and my brain cells are still firing. So I truly believe that we get out of this what we put into it. And like the Beatles said, in the end, the love you take is equal to the love you make. And I think we should maybe move on, if I can get this to work, and talk about CBDs, the anti-THC. It's kind of the worst kept secret in medical research. And you know, studies released as, as recently as last week are showing teen marijuana use may show no effect on brain tissue, unlike alcohol. All right, alcohol is classified as a poison. We haven't had any medical studies done since the 70s on this stuff. It's been stopped, it's been blocked by the DEA. And so we have this herb that's been providing healing powers and natural remedies for tens of thousands of years. And because our government went eeny, meeny, miny, mo and said that alcohol's good, caffeine's acceptable, Ta tobacco is acceptable, but you know what? Marijuana isn't, and because of that, research has been delayed by decades, and it's only now because of the medical marijuana states and the recreational states that we're able to conduct this research. I love Texas. I've lived here since the 70s. I was a medical professional in the ERs uh, of Dallas, and I... Um, and I've grown weeds since the late 70s, side by side. You know what? I've always had this duality in my life, okay? This dichotomy, because I've had to have this Clark Kent thing going on. I, you know, I work in hospitals, have to get side by side with the physicians. And the fact is, oops, we'll go the other way, if we can. And of course, all right, but let's, let's talk about some cannabis facts, all right? We know these things to be true, all right? Cannabis overall is a cell protectant. It's an analgesic. It stops pain. It's a neuroprotectant. It's a natural relaxant, anti-inflammatory, bone stimulant. It inhibits cancer growth, and it's a sedative. We know these things about it, okay? It's the things that we don't know about it yet that we need to find out. This is me, side by side, working in, in hospital emergency rooms. I'd go home and I'd go into our gardens. This happens to be a legal consult uh, that I was doing in California underneath the state guidelines. And a friend of mine uh, has a grow and delivery. I was out there to judge the San Diego Medicup on 420, and I took a look at his grow operation. The fact of the matter is, you know, I know this industry pretty well. I can grow hydro, I can grow soil, I, I can consult on a lot of different things, and frankly, Sean asked me what I'd like to talk on, and the fact is, I said, anything you like, um, except for how to use PowerPoint, evidently. <laughs> <laughs> so. Excuse me on that. Um, all right. So maybe I'll learn that next time. All right. We all know the propaganda, right? This is your brain on drugs? This has been disproven, okay? I mean, the research, the, research, the study came out just last week, you know, on um, the teenagers. They were followed for 120 days. They smoked chronic, uh, and uh, there were CT scans, PET scans done both before and after. There was no significant change in their brain scans whatsoever after this period. You try the same thing with alcohol, and you're going to see significant changes in atrophy and, and uh, some, some damage. Alcohol is, a, in fact, classified as a poison. <laughs> Marijuana is not. And in fact, I'll tell you right now, 
I have a thousand dollar bounty out for anybody who can find me a death certificate that cites marijuana either as a primary, a secondary, or a tertiary cause of death. It's not out there. I just had somebody offer to double my bounty. Two thousand bucks? Anybody want it? Find me a death certificate. It's not out there. I've signed them. I've reviewed them. I've had to call deaths. I'll tell you what, I've looked for one for 10 or 20 years. They're not out there. There's no credible source that's ever said that one human being has ever died from using marijuana. In fact, the statistics show you'd have to smoke, I believe, 2,700 joints in an hour to, to even get close. And frankly, even for a stoner like me that you could probably roll up and smoke when I die, the fact of the matter is, and get a good buzz, mind you, but the fact of the matter is, is, is that these, these things are, are culturally slanted and we need to get moving on, on the research that we're doing and we're doing it on the MMJ Muse uh, page and the MMJ Muse project. Now, yeah, MMJ, we use it as, a, as an acronym. We're just talking about medical marijuana, okay? It can be a prophylaxis, you know, a prophylactic that stops people from getting pregnant. This stops people from getting diseases. It could be used as a palliative to, to give people relief when they're in pain, simply to make them feel better. You know what? If I was on chemo and I was puking, I'd want some fucking weed. Pardon my language, you can edit that out. By the way, I want to shout out also to our AV people. They are awesome. And um, I asked them to please use that special filter to make me look like Brad Pitt and sound really, really smart. So evidently that hasn't worked yet, but we're still <laughs> working on it. Um, you know what? We're all about sharing knowledge and power, okay? I'm old school. Like, like Keith, as a matter of fact, I'm called OG. I gotta tell you, I'm so not a gangster. But at the same time, the very same things that inspired Keith inspired me. Nam brought me into the streets. I gotta tell you, I had friends coming back in body bags from Vietnam. And Nixon, you know, Nixon was vile. And I was in the streets, and, I was, and it drove me to advocacy and to activism. And believe me, it then quickly moved into human rights, to feminism before the term was coined, and to every aspect of human rights, which includes the right to medical marijuana or to recreational marijuana. This is not just an isolated issue. It's a complicated issue, but you know what? This is a human right. My wife, Sharon, of 30 years, died, God rest her soul, five years ago, in my arms, 30 miles away in Dallas. And I have to tell you, she may, be, she may well be alive to this day had I gotten her to an MMJ state. The fact is, they weren't around back then. And I didn't. And you know what? It's okay, because I'll help others. And I have patients who come to me daily, and we're helping them. So, I'm gonna to touch on just a few other issues. The fact is, I'm about sharing knowledge. That's all I want. I, you know, I have a standing offer. I'm really about community. We are a community. Actually, you know, that's where all this started. You know what? It all started because we like to get high and, and get high together as friends and the sense of community. We need to get this done as friends and as a community. And I think that there are, are ways to do that. Now this is, this is one of the reasons why I don't want to get into the details of CBDs. You know what? We could discuss it. We could really discuss it. The fact of the matter is marijuana is made up of, of four primary ingredients. The psychotropic ingredients, or THC and CBDs, to a lesser degree CBNs, and then we're talking about the inert materials. Uh, but right here on this particular chart, that particular chart, we're just talking about CBDs, and 
That shows you how complicated it can get, how we're looking into subgroups, and believe me, I am not a rocket scientist. We send this off to our, our researcher, Robert Forrest, at UCLA Medical Center. Um, we have researchers working on this across the country, and they could better speak to it than I could. But obviously, there's immunosuppressant activities, uh, anti-inflammatories. We could go on and on, but you know what? We're not going to. Um, you know what? Let's make it simple. Take the KISS principle, but we're going to change it to, you know, keep it simple, stoners, right? Okay, uh, the fact of the matter is, is first off, hemp is not marijuana, okay? Let's just set hemp aside. Totally different discussion. But when you're talking about marijuana, the, the species, or sativa and indica, they have different properties, and we're looking into that right now. The fact of the matter is, is high CBD sativas seem to have tremendous efficacy with uh, TBI, traumatic brain injury, epilepsy, seizures, lupus, and another of, uh, a number of other conditions. And you know what? What works for you during the daytime may not be what you want to take at night. For instance, um, a friend of mine, Veronica Livermore, a seizure patient uh, in Washington State who also has carpal tunnel, will take um, certain medications which are high in CBD during the daytime for palliative relief of the pain. And then at night she'll switch over to a high THC, say um, Jack the Ripper, which is, uh, I mean, we're, we're having incredible strains now. That's 26%. When I was growing OG back in 79, we got uh, the University of Washington strain out of the government labs on the campus, and this stuff rocked. It was amazing, amazing. Buds as thick as my arm, right? But it was 13% THC, and that's low by today's standards. So, and I'm going to do a strip act while we're on here. Um, the, you know, the, the fact of the matter is that that is low, and now I, I'm consistently seeing uh, indicas that are 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26 percent THC. I've seen claims of 27 percent THC. I ain't buying it. I want to see three labs verify it. That's really high. But the fact of the matter is we got there through Mendelian type P-like uh, experiments by cloning, by cross-pollinating, and certainly not by calling up Monsanto to do genetically modified organisms on our herb. I mean, really? You know, the fact of the matter is, is that these little girls have been in my care for decades, and now, all of a sudden, you know, they, they're going to... Um, somehow take credit for it? I mean, really? With patents being issued for marijuana right now? Come on, give me a right. This is a human right. Let's make sure we understand that. You know, I was just interviewed on TV a few minutes ago. The interviewer kind of broke down during the interview because his wife's family has cancer. We started talking about CBD. This affects everybody. If it doesn't affect you directly, it affects somebody you know, somebody you love. And you know what? If this isn't a medical marijuana state yet, and it will be, and Texas won't be the last state to fall, I, you know, I feel it. Look, this is family. We'll get it done. We're, we've got a big tent. There's room for different views in it. And I think that, that we will get the job done. I don't think Texas, frankly, wants to be the last because of our pride. Let's take a look at how cannabis compares to other drugs. All right, let's, let's talk some reality here. Let's get some facts in here. Nicotine, heroin, cocaine, alcohol, caffeine, and then weed. I'll let you read the chart yourself, but, but clearly withdrawal, reinforcement, tolerance, dependence, intoxication, Addiction potential in virtually all categories. Cannabis is an innocuous substance, and we need to get over this, this is your brain on drug stuff. Now, this is the study I was talking about. You can all Google it. It was just released last week. Two, and there, the sad thing is there's a dearth of information 
about medical marijuana because the studies haven't been done since the 70s because the DEA said there is no medicinal use for marijuana. At the same time, the U.S. Patent Office is issuing patents for the medical application of cannabinoids. You can't have it both ways, all right? If, it's, if one government body is certifying patents and another is saying it has no medical use, you know what? Maybe they need to smoke a joint and get together and figure it out. This is, this is a hydro garden. You know what? We're in Texas. I'm a West Coast kid. I, I may have grown up here in Texas. Well, no, I failed to grow up here in Texas. But the fact is, this could be happening in Texas. You know, we could have hydro going here. We can have full houses. We can have professional consultants flying in to tell you how to get rid of your spider mites. And I got to tell you, I'm an organic grower. I don't want anything sprayed on my plants. I got news for you. I do not want to smoke. I even had my dear friend Dave Hargett at SoCal Cuts, who sells cuttings for a living in California. Um, you know, I want to support the small can of businesses because the big boys are coming in now. All right? One of the original founders of Microsoft just came into the game. He wants to get involved. Richard Lee at Oaksterdam, uh, you know, he, he stuck his neck up, he taunted the feds, and they took him down. Uh, the fact of the matter is I'm state coordinator for Cannabis Career Institute, uh, where we teach people. We're all about sharing knowledge, whether it's hydro, grow, delivery, dispensary, medibles. Um, the pros and cons of joining an MMJ list. You know, so the fact of the matter is, is, is why would you do it with the potential of, of le losing your gun rights? Um, people were recently uh, um, arrested for marijuana uh, and they had their children taken away. So, you know what, there's a lot of pushback on this and it's despicable. And the fact of the matter is, is it's, it's despicable to take medications away from people that need them. Mo Green from Einstein Concentrates in LA he says, as far as I'm concerned, CBDs and really all cannabinoids are the backbone to health and proper maintenance of DNA. They are some of the building blocks of life other than our community, ignored by modern science and medicine. It is the cure for what he says, he says for everything. And you know what? I'm a believer. You know what? Uh, DFW Normal is making a difference. They are our voice here. Texas rocks. We need, to, we need to continue the fight here so that we do have the same rights that they have on the West Coast and that we do have the ability to conduct research here. This is the slide. You know what? The cannabis, in order for a substance to be placed on Schedule 1, it's got to be addicting, cause addiction, or have no currently accepted medical use. Well, you know what? If they're issuing patents for medical use, what the hell? Seriously. So, I'm working with Debbie M. Wilson, PhD. She's a Gulf War I veteran. She, she does have traumatic brain injury. Um, she's been read by five million people. She's the third uh, greatest hit site on the CDD, CDC website. Um, God bless her. She was treated by doctors. She was given uh, traditional medicines uh, by Big Pharma. They impacted her colon uh, in addition to being backed over by a tank and having traumatic brain injury. They've now removed her entire intestinal tract so she can't take traditional medicines. She needs high CBD oils and concentrates and she's getting them. My home of Washington, shouting it out because it's legal there. And I got to tell you, smoking my first legal joint on my mom's porch with my Sgt. Pepper poster on the wall rocked. You know? It just rocked. And I want you all to feel that feeling of freedom. The feeling of the government staying the hell out of our lives, out of our bedrooms, and out of what we smoke. So. 
You know what? Let's talk briefly about the lies. You know what? There's myths about cherry trees. The truth is, George Washington, he grew hemp. The Constitution was written on hemp. You know, here's a page from George Washington's diary where he's giving instructions to his gardener for growing hemp. You know what? And he said, make the most you can of the Indian hemp seed and sow it everywhere. Thomas Jefferson, hemp is of first necessity to the wealth and protection of the country. And of course, Thomas Jefferson also drafted the Declaration of Independence, which was written on hemp. Benjamin Franklin started the first hemp paper mill. These were our founding fathers. They wanted us to grow hemp. They knew that the future of our country lay with hemp. And you know what? To this day, it still does. And medical marijuana and recreational marijuana, although a multi-billion dollar industry, is going to be dwarfed by the trillion dollar industry of hemp. And you know what? Randolph Hearst can spin in his grave. I don't care. These prohibition laws were written by our grandparents who were drinking opium out of bottles and they were driving Model T's and this has no relevance in our time. No more relevance than a horse whip or a buggy. I gotta tell you, we've gotta let people know we're living in the year 2013 and those laws just don't make sense. I've got more quotes from Einstein concentrates. These people know what they're doing. They address the butane issues, but you know what? We've addressed conks today, but the bottom line is we have a lot of believers, and I'm one of them. You know what? I wasn't initially. I saw MMJ as an end around play to get weed. I'm a medical professional. Science matters. You need peer-reviewed studies. You need people to come in and take a look in an unbiased fashion with double blinds, whatever it requires, so that I can take it to my colleagues and convince them. Get a peer-reviewed discussion going on so that we can get done with this and move on. And I'll tell you what, don't ever mention any other drug in the same breath as weed to me. Okay? I don't want to hear about coke. I, you know what? Other people can talk about legalizing all the other stuff. I'm just about weed, okay? And frankly, in some cases, it might do us a disservice, but the medical applications are here, they're proven, they're working with AIDS, Alzheimer's, arthritis, cancers, chronic pain. Believe me, I know about chronic pain. I wake up every day, my spine was crushed into dust, and I've been glued back together a number of times. But the fact of the matter is, I, I wake and bake, and I'm just fine. So, you know, I, I don't need anything else. You know what? Reality check time, folks. Farmers shouldn't be felons. You know what? I got to tell you, I've only been able to speak out and advocate for the last four months because I had felony grow charges out for me for over 25 years, okay? Ticks me off. My wife died with felony charges out against her. I had them dismissed posthumously after sending her death certificate, but I got news for you. I went up there. And now Washington agrees with my way of thinking. They dismissed all the charges. So I am free to speak up. And you know what? I can rest when I die. Because I'm serious as a heart attack. It's time to pay it forward. That's why I'm helping other people in our community. I think small businesses need to be helped before the big players come in. I think we need to teach our children. I think we need intergenerational dialogues going on. Teach peace, folks. Teach peace. This is what it's all about. This is a dear friend of mine. They wrote the, this shows Keith's influence on society, how much we've changed. We're now talking about children's books for marijuana to, to have a discussion, a healthy discussion in your family. Frankly, I wish I had this when I, when I had my children when they were younger. You know, I would have loved to have read it to them. And uh, Geneva Carmen uh, is the illustrator, and her daughter Morgan wrote it. And I think it's beautiful. And I got to tell you, we donated $500 worth of them to the Cash Hyde Foundation yesterday.
This is Cannabis Career Institute. We're, right now, we are the heir apparent of, of um, Oaksterdam since Richard Lee decided uh, he wanted to play games with the feds. Um, we did recently uh, enter into pure advocacy, aside from the educational efforts that we make. And we had a march in Las Vegas a couple weeks ago, and the initiative passed the following Monday. We won't take any claim of it, but you know what, um, or any claim for the success of it, but every drop in the bucket, you know, every voice heard. And by the way, this beautiful woman on the left is Erica Golter. She's our COO, and frankly, I believe today she's in Pennsylvania teaching new people up there. And as I said, I wish you all could walk into a grow room here in Texas, check out your own spider mites, teach peace, okay? And, oh, tch, sorry, this is me getting baked at the San Diego <laughs> Medicup, and I awarded the, the uh, prize uh, and bragging rights for both uh, the best bud, which went to uh, sour lemon, and best concentrates, which went to Blue Dreams by uh, Zach Chronic. And, oh, wow, I must have been totally baked. Okay. Uh, and I was. And you know what? I was staying at a friend's house, and after 10 hours of judging conks and flowers, uh, I filmed some videos. This is what you can expect to see in Texas. You want this sitting on your floor? This is what we got to do. This was at my friend's house, and I got news for you. I was baked the entire time. <laughs> okay. And you know what, let's break some myths here. You know, pot smokers can be successful. They can contribute to society. I want more people to say, you know what, I'm not a criminal. I smoke pot, I contribute to society, I pay my taxes. And you know what, we have a lot of successful people and Richard Branson, Morgan Freeman, and many others among them. You know what, let MMJ Freedom ring. And I want to drive a stake through the parchment that prohibition is written on. And I'll tell you what, it'll get me or I'll get it. And I'm going to hand that parchment over to the folks at Burning Man. And we're going to toss it right on the fire. This is my wife. This is my beloved wife, Sharon, my first son, Austin. I have no idea who that dude is. Uh, sitting there, and we are criminals, we're outlaws, we're desperados. Uh, people call me OG, I'm really not a gangster. Uh, but you know what? They made me one over pot. And my wife died with warrants out for her. So once again, my name's Stuart Gus. I want to thank you all for coming here, supporting DFW Normal. Keith Strap is like amazing. And you all have been an amazing audience, and I want to thank you. I just want to ask you to support your can of businesses and to help us. We're in the red zone. Let's push this across the goal line and get it done. Keith and I are, agreement. This is, are in agreement. This is doable. So let's do it. Let's make sure Texas isn't the last one to fall. I'm out.